Hey Kim, that was a great video. Um, I really, really resonated with everything you said. And um, I even think that I have a similar history of um, a relationship to to God or to spirituality in the sense of when I was when I was younger, um, just because my mom was and so is religious, I had a very spiritual outlook on life in the sense that I would, uh, you know, pray or I would talk to God and ask for things. Like if my mom wasn't home and it was late and I was wondering where she was, I would pray that she would get home, you know, in, a, in the next 10 seconds. So now I would just keep doing it over and over, you know, God, please make my mom come home. Please make my mom come home. And um, I guess it was just because I felt helpless. I'm not the only thing I could do, but, um, you know, besides that overtly Christian type of spiritualism, which I don't even know if that is really spirituality because it's, uh, you know, I was a child raised within a specific type of religious context, Christianity and the Bible. And so I was interpreting a spiritual feeling through the lens of that religion. And it wasn't necessarily this pure spirituality, but nonetheless, I believed in God when I was younger. Um, I also have all these memories of laying in my bed, maybe when I was four years old, and seeing um, some type of fairy godmother-like figure always over at my bookshelf, um, picking up books and flipping through them and putting them back. And um, So that's weird. Uh, and I'm never... I can't ever quite tell if they were all dreams that I had or if that was me hallucinating in my bed at night. I don't know. But anyways, then I got a little older and I started to realize how uh, how much we knew about the world scientifically and how there were these, these people and this whole institution, the scientific institution that, that said that, you know, we don't need this idea of the supernatural. To explain anything and I really looked at that and I, I looked at the behavior that religion seems to cause the violence and the, the hatred of other people and other cultures and uh, I sort of gave up on the whole God thing until I took my first uh, psychology class in high school and I realized maybe more about what it means to be human and then I became a lot more spiritual after that and Spirituality really just means being human, I think, and being open to your experience and not having any specific beliefs because atheism is a belief system, a very, um, in some cases, dogmatic belief system, I think, because, you know, every system of thought, whether it's Christianity, Judaism, whether it's science, whether it's... Um, uh, you know, any, any, any type of cultural worldview is based on certain axioms, certain foundations, like uh, there is a self. In the Western modern world, it's I think, therefore I am. That's the axiom of the individual self who is responsible. You know, I, I also just watched your free will video, and um, you kind of wavered back and forth between whether we have free will or whether we need free will or what's going on if, if we can ever be in control of what we do because even if we do have this will that does things we can never never really predict what is they're going to cause or what the effect of them is going to be of, of our actions we can never know in advance every little detail in order to prepare our decision for the actual event which will occur we can never know everything so to, to really be free sort of does seem impossible. But I think, like you, I always sort of um, go back and forth between free will and determinism, and really, I think I'm starting to mm -hmm. get to the point where I don't, I don't think that problem itself, free will and determinism, can be solved. Because that whole dichotomy is, is a product of a worldview which atheism takes very seriously because it's a, it's the scientific mechanistic view that allowed humankind or at least western humanity to move out of uh, the medieval um, structure of consciousness or worldview which which had it that uh, you know god obviously exists and created the world and is in control and if we're good we'll go to heaven and this life is just 
you know, a step along the way. This isn't the final stage. But then science comes along and says, um, no, God is no longer here. There is no external personal power head or power figure that is controlling and manipulating the universe from the outside. The universe does itself. It's a huge machine that does itself. But while science said this about the universe, it said something different about the human self, or it unconsciously assumed something different about the human self. That the human self was free. That there was a mind separate from this body that controlled this body and that had the ability to mirror the world or to, ha or to have a, a perception of the world which was a mirror of the objective external reality. And thereby, it could, it could be free because then it can with enough um, patience and time and, uh, you know, meticulously measuring the objective of environment that it is privileged to in this reflection through the senses, it, we can come to know exactly what's out there. Therefore, we can gain maximum freedom and control over our environment. Unlike we are in real life, we've come to realize after maybe 500 years of this scientific, atheistic worldview that we really can never know everything about what's out there because it's too complex. Mostly because not only is it just this huge intricate web of relations, but it's also related to who we think we are, to our minds. There is no mind separate from the body or separate from the world, right? It's all intertangled and enmeshed together in this, this web that's not only out there, but it's in here too. Or is the inside and the outside are not two things. They're just names for two sides of the same loop of awareness. Maybe. And when you look at it in this context, free will and determinism sort of go out the window. Because what is free if there's no separate mind here? And what is determined if there is no world out there? that exists apart from who we are or what we experience now because you know here we are having this experience of the world without there being experience is there a world can we answer that question I mean it seems easy to say well of course there's a world because when I die everybody will still be here they were here before I was born I know that for a fact because my parents uh, conceived me, right? But I don't know. Do I really know? We don't know, I don't think. Which is why it seems better to be open and uh, acknowledge that we can never have perfect knowledge. We can never know for sure that God doesn't exist. Um, and by the very nature of language itself, we can never even understand what we mean when we use the word God. So, to decide once and for all that God doesn't exist, we have to then, as atheists, explain what we mean by that. What goes away if God doesn't exist? I think you talked about uh, evolution, Kim, and how there has to be um, a certain amount of variation in order to encourage evolution to take place, but if there's too much evolution, then the um, children of the parents of a particular species are going to vary too greatly from the, the genotype which has survived and evolved up to that point and just die because it's not suited for the environment. And then, you know, science has shown us that this process takes place and it seems to explain evolution, and yet still there's no reason why life wants to survive and that's the crack I think in the mechanistic atheistic godless spiritualist um, mystery less universe that seems to be the one a lot of atheists uh, inhabit um, why survive Ulysses Camus Kim as one of your um, favorite Authors, a stranger, was your uh, was one of your favorite books, and um, he obviously didn't think we could 
give a reason why life wants to survive, right? It, or at least human life. There really is no meaning besides that which we create. Or that the meaning of life, in some sense, is to try to defeat death, even though we know we can't. I think is basically what Camus said, which seems depressing. There's got to be a better reason why life wants to live, right? Right? 